Hello guys, this is your first video for Thursday, April 2nd for AP Euro. Uh, we're now getting to enlightenment. We're picking up with John Locke. John Locke. Like Hobbes, John Locke uh, was interested in the world of science. His two treaties on government uh, written before the revolution of 1688 was published after William and Mary came to the throne and served as a, a defense of the revolution as well as the basis for English Bill of Rights. It also proved critical for the intellectual development of the founders of the United States. Locke argued that, that man is born free in nature, although as society gets more advanced, government is needed to organize the society. Because humans are free and rational entities, they, when they enter into a social contract with the state, they do not give up their inalienable rights of, to life, liberty, and property. Should an oppressive government challenge those rights, people have the right to rebel. Locke was an opponent of religious enthusiasm. In his letter concerning toleration, Locke attacked the idea of Christianity could be spread by force. His influential essay on human understanding contained the idea that children enter the world with no set of ideas. At birth, the mind is a blank slate or tabula rosa, and infants do not possess the uh, Christian concept of predestination or original sin. Instead, Locke subscribed to the theory that all knowledge was empirical and that it came from experience. All right, 18th century enlightenment. Although his response be uh, has become a bit of a cliche, there is no better answer to the question what is the Enlightenment, than the offered by German philosopher Immanuel Kant. For Kant, the answer was clear, dare to know. By this, he means that it was necessary for individuals to cast off those ideas of the past that had been accepted simply because of tradition or intellectual laziness, and instead use one's reason to probe it for answers to questions on the nature of mankind. The ultimate reward, stated Kant, or Kant, would be something uh, that all previous generations had so woefully lacked, freedom. This freedom would extend to the political and religious realms and would have also led the writer's enlightenment to cast doubt on such ancient human practices as slavery. Traditionally, the enlightenment has been associated with France, where they use the term philosophes to describe the thinkers of the age. These philosophes were not organized in any formal group, although the, most of them, mo many of the most prominent displayed their ir irradiation at salons, which were informal discussion groups organized by wealthy women. Others would hang around the print shop putting the final touches on their pamphlets. No matter where the ideas were produced, French thinkers helped produce the so-called Republic of Letters in an international community of writers who communicated in French. The Republic of Letters extended through much of the Western Europe and, of course, to the American colonies, where the ideas of Enlightenment would play a significant role in the founding of the United States. The direction of the Enlightenment changed over the course of the 18th century. The early Enlightenment was deeply rooted in the scientific revolution and was profoundly influenced by Great Britain which appeared to continental writers as a bastion of freedom and economic expansion while also providing the world with such inestimable thinkers as John Locke. Locke's ideas expressed in his essay, Human Concerning Understanding, uh, that the individual is a blank slate at birth provide a powerful argument for the potential um, impact of education as well as for the inherent equality of all people. Locke also greatly influenced 18th century author who's a contention that every person has a right to life, liberty, and property, and that there's a contractual relationship between the ruler and the subjects. As the Age of Enlightenment continued, it moved beyond the influence of Locke, who had refused to see how freedom could be granted to slaves in the Americas. Writers such as Voltaire and David Hume would offer a powerful challenge to establish religion. By the end of the century, people such as Adam Smith had veered into other areas such as economic thought. Jean-Jacques Rousseau inspired people of the age to seek to, seek to find truth not through the cold application of reason, but rather through a, through a thorough examination of their inner emotions. Meanwhile, in such places as Russia, Prussia, and Austria, rulers sought to find ways to blend their royal absolutism with some of the ideas of enlightenment, although little would come of uh, this attempt except perhaps a further enhancement of their absolute authority. Voltaire Perhaps the greatest of the philosophers of Voltaire, after writing a number of rather forgettable volumes of poetry and drama, Voltaire went to England on a trip that would forever change his life. He was struck by the relative religious tolerance practiced there as well as the freedom to express one's idea in print, far greater than that which existed in France. Uh, Voltaire was also struck by the honor that England showed Newton uh, when the scientist was buried with great pomp at a state funeral. To Voltaire, England seemed to offer those things that allow for the happiness of the individual, which seemed so desperately lacking in his own land of France. Although educated by the Jesuits, Voltaire hated the Catholic Church and despised that he, uh, what he thought was the narrowness and bigotry that was the heart of all religious traditions. Voltaire, like many of his contemporaries, was a deist, one who believes that God created the universe and then stepped back from creation to allow it to operate under the laws of science. 
Voltaire felt that religion crushed the human spirit and to, that to be free, man needed to uh, crush, the hor- the, crush the horrible thing um, in a famous uh, French slogan, E cross la, f- la femme. Candide. Voltaire's most famous work is Candide, which, which he was inspired to write following an earthquake that completely leveled the city of Lisbon in 1755. Voltaire was particularly struck by the story of a group of parishioners who, following the earthquake, went back to the church to give thanks to God for sparing their lives, only to have the weakened foundations of the church collapse on them. One of the false stereotypes concerning the Enlightenment is that it was fundamentally optimistic. Candide is a deeply pessimistic work, as young Candide and his traveling companions met with one disaster after another. The book basically touts the idea that humans cannot expect to find contentment by connecting themselves with a specific philosophical system. Instead, the best one can hope for is a sort of private inner solace, or as Voltaire put it, one must cultivate one's own garden. Voltaire became an intellectual celebrity across Europe following involvement, his involvement in the case of Jean Calais, a French Protestant who was falsely accused of murdering his son after learning that the son was planning to convert to Catholicism. In 1762, the Parliament of Toulouse ordered Calas execution, and he was brutally tortured to death. In the following year, Voltaire published the Treatise on Toleration and pushed for a reexamination of, of the evidence. By 1765, the authorities reversed their decision, and while it was ob- obviously too late to aid the unfortunate Kala, Voltaire was able to use the case as a linchpin t- in his fight against religious dog- dogmatism and intolerance, one of the greatest legacies of the Enlightenment. Montesquieu. Charles Louis de Saconte, or Baron de Montesquieu, wrote what he what was perhaps the most influential work in the Enlightenment, Spirit of the Laws. Montesquieu, who became president of the Parliament of Bordeaux, a body of nobles that functioned as the province's law court, was, like Voltaire, inspired by the political system found in Great Britain. He incorrectly interpreted the British Constitution in the Spirit of the Laws. Montesquieu wrote of the English separation of powers among the various branches of government, providing for the possibility of checks and balances, something that did not exist in the British system. In many ways, Montesquieu was... Uh, a political conservative who did not believe in a republic, which he associated with anarchy, but rather wanted France to reestablish aristocratic authority as a means of placing limits on royal absolutism. In an earlier work, per, uh, Persian Letters, Montesquieu cr- critiques his native, native France through a series of letters between two Persians traveling in Europe. To avoid royal and church censorship, Montesquieu executed a deeply satirical work that attacked religious zealotry, while also implying that Despite the differences between the Islamic East and Christian West, a universal system of justice was necessary. Another aspect of Montesquieu's universal ideas was his anti-slavery sentiment. He deplored slavery as, a, as being against natural law. Diderot. The Encyclopedia, the brainchild of the Dynasty Diderot, was one of the greatest collaborative achievements in the Enlightenment and was executed by the community of scholars known as the Republic of Letters. The Encyclopedia uh, in, in, exemplifies the 18th century belief that all knowledge could be organized and presented in a scientific manner. The first of 20 volumes appeared in 1751, with such luminaries as Voltaire, Montesquieu, and Rousseau contributing articles. Diderot, the son of an artisan, also had a great deal of respect for those who worked with their hands and included articles and various tools in the ways in which they made uh, people more productive. The encyclopedia was also important for spreading Enlightenment ideas beyond the borders of France, Copies were sent to places uh, far away as Russia, Scandinavia, and American shores. Thomas Jefferson and Benjamin Franklin purchased their own sets, and in various parts of Europe, the work was attacked by the censors, particularly in places like Italy, where the Catholic Church was highly critical of what it viewed as thinly veiled attacks on religious practices. In France, the work was at various times placed under the censors' ban because it was highly critical of monarchical authority. Ironically, Diderot had to turn to the throne for protection for, of his copyright when the printers uh, published pirated copies. Jean-Jacques Rousseau. The Enlightenment thought did not consist of a single intellectual strand. The work of Rousseau provides one of the best examples of, of this fact. He lived a deeply troubled and uh, solitary existence. At one point or another, he antagonized many of the other leading philosophers, including Voltaire, who, had, who hated Rousseau's champion of the motion of reason. Rousseau was perhaps the most radical of the philosophers, unlike Many of the philosophers who believed in a constitutional monarchy as the best form of government were so believed in the creation of a direct democracy. Although during his lifetime, his works were not widely read, following Rousseau's death, his ideas became more influential. Many of the leading um, participants of the, uh, of the, in the more radical stages of the French Revolution 
uh, shared his work. Rousseau and Romanticism Rousseau helped set the stage for Romantic movement in the late 18th and 19th centuries. His pedagogical novel, Emile, deals with a young man who receives education that places high regard on developing emotion, his emotions over his reason. To achieve this, the character Emile is encouraged to explore nature as a means of heightening his emotional sensitivity. Rousseau was also important for emphasizing the differences between children and adults. He argued that there were stages of development during which the child needed to be allowed to grow freely without undue influence from the adult world. Alright, we'll stop video one there.